Okay, so let's take a look at this word problem that we were given for question of the day here. Um, John is a tutor. He charges students an hourly rate for his services. He makes $102 when he works six hours. He makes $187 for 11 hours of work. If you were to graph John's earnings, what would be the slope of the graph? So we're looking for slope. Um, so let's just go ahead and define slope for everybody if we forgot. Slope is defined as the rate of change. And I tell my students all the time um, in class, in a word problem, it can be hard to spot a slope. Um, so remember that um, a rate of change is always something per something. It can be stated in those terms, um, like miles per hour is an example of a rate of change. Or um, um, let's see, miles per gallon, um, dollars per hour, anything blank per blank, that's an example of a rate of change, OK? Um, so in this particular problem, we have um, a gentleman making money depending on how many hours he works. So if we're talking slope, we're talking dollars per hour. OK, now you could do this um, the uh, what I would call the long way, which is using the slope formula. So if you look at your GED sheet, you're going to see or your GED formula sheet. You're going to see a formula on it um, that says has this slope formula, and uh, it's m equals um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's kind of a complicated formula. I could use it in this situation, but I have to tell you the truth. I'm not going to. Here's why I'm not going to. I know this. And let's see if you, so this is one way. This is one way. It'll work, I promise you. It's a long way, but it'll work. So the slope formula, okay? But I want to show you a little shortcut. Oh, First of all, we have to know when we have a shortcut why they work. So here's the deal. Would you agree with this statement? When John works no hours, he makes no money. Well, of course, that's how um, this world works. If you don't do any tutoring hours, you're not going to make any money. That means to us that our, if we were to graph this equation, um, our what we call our y-intercept, so let me bust out a pencil so I can show you what I mean, and I'm not just talking and talking at you. So imagine we had this graph of how much money he makes. If he works zero hours, he makes zero dollars. So I'm going to cross the y-axis here on my graph at zero and then go up from there. Whenever you have a case where you cross at zero, it's really, really easy to see uh, the slope of a line. You're basically just looking at how many dollars this dude makes per hour. So let me just write out this phrase, dollars per hour, because I love it when somebody asks me to find anything per anything, because it tells me exactly what to do. It says take the dollars. So let's go here. Um, John made $102. So I'm going to put 102 under this dollar sign. And then I want to per that. What does per mean? Well, per literally means divide by the number of hours John worked, and he worked six hours when he made $102, okay? Now, you can do that inside work. You can do that in your calculator. Um, I'm going to do it in my calculator. If you had this on the GED, you would definitely have a calculator. And I see this dude making $17 an hour. Now, you probably are saying, Kate, okay, but that's only using two of the numbers. What about the other two numbers? Don't I have to use all the, the other two numbers? Well, the deal here, again, is because he works, when he works zero hours, he makes zero dollars. I should get the exact same number if I use the other numbers. Imagine if I took 187 here and I divided by 11. We're assuming John does not give discounts. Uh, for working multiple hours. So let's see, what if I'd have done 187 divided by 11? And look, I would get the exact same answer, 17. So I can be really sure here that the slope of this line is 17 uh, because he makes $17 per hour.